What's up guys, I'm J-Man, and let's talk about one of the biggest mindfucks of all time, Inception. Directed by Chris Nolan of the Dark Knight trilogy fame, as well as other great works, Inception was a passion project of his for ten years. It was strange, it was unusual, it was awesome, it was mind-bending, most of all, it was strangely fun. Even though it was so confusing, it caused everyone to have to watch it multiple times to understand it. Now, there's definitely been a lot of discussion surrounding the film over the years ever since its release, including the most controversial thing about it, the ending. Did it topple? Did it keep spinning? Was Cobb awake? Or did he choose to remain lost in the dream forever? Even Nolan himself at the time refused to answer the question, saying it's completely up to the audience. Nowadays, he answers it in as cryptic a way as he can, but just goes to show him, I guess. So I'm here to discuss why I think the ending was totally and completely real. People have debated this back and forth all the time. If you replay it back a million times, you can totally see it start to topple. Others have said, oh no, it was still spinning, you're totally mistaken. People have made countless videos and theories explaining either way as well as other differences and similarities between the dream world and real world. While people may definitely argue either way, I think both are still kind of missing the point. The point is not whether it topples or not, but rather whether we need to see it topple or not. The short explanation is, since Cobb didn't need to see it, then why should we? But to expound, Cobb's main problem in the whole movie is that he constantly questions his reality. And by extension, so does the audience. We're given constant clues that make us question the logic of the world. During the chase in Mombasa, Cobb runs down a thin corridor that seems like walls closing in, much like claustrophobia in a nightmare. Directly after that, Saito shows up to rescue him. How did he get there? How did he know where Cobb would be? How did he know he'd be running from Cobalt? Even the scene of Maul's death. Why does it look like she's at the other building across from him? Is there a whole connected part that we're just not seeing, or is he so lost that even his memories don't seem real? It would make some sense, especially considering the first time we see them die in limbo, they're still young, but it's later revealed that they grew old together. To further bolster this, Miles can sense that he's lost just by him talking about Maul as if she were still alive. Maul won't let me. Come back to reality, Tom. Please. So Cobb's whole arc in the movie is that he needs to forgive himself and stop blaming himself for Maul's death. Another thing to note is the top itself. It's actually not his totem to know if he's awake or not. It symbolizes his guilt about Maul, since it was the main tool that caused her to start questioning her reality. You may think that his own projection of Maul represents his guilty conscience, but that's just the manifestation of his guilt his attempt at trying to keep her alive. Others have made the claim that it's his ring that's the real totem. He wears it in the dream world, but he doesn't wear it in the real world. Personally, I think that's a good idea, but the movie never really does anything with it. I mean, if that was the case, then don't you think he would have noticed it and that could have been the real totem all along? So what is his real totem, you might ask? Well, that's easy. His children. Throughout the movie, we only see glimpses of them acting out the exact moment Cobb saw them last, and at no moment do we ever see their faces. This is the one thing Cobb says he really wants, to see their faces again. See, I thought about calling out to them so they'd turn and smile and I could see those, those beautiful faces of theirs, but it's all too late. But when he has a chance to look at them in limbo, he refuses because he knows they're not real. Those aren't my children. You keep telling yourself that, but you don't believe it. I know. This could be a little tricky since he almost thinks Maul is real. No, she... she is not real. How do you know that? He can perfectly look at her, so why can't he look at them? Well, this is actually the scene where Cobb admits he finally knows what's real. I know what's real, Maul. And even later tells Maul that he now knows she's not real. I can't imagine you with all your complexity. All your imperfection. He's realized that his own projections aren't good enough. He can never create her in his mind how she really was. Only the authentic person herself can make her who she is. Otherwise, she's nothing more than a ghost. You're just a shade. You're just a shade of my real wife. And you are the best that I can do, but... I'm sorry, you're just not good enough. 
And that brings us back to the ending. Cobb walks around still unsure if anything is real, so for the last time, he spins the top. But then he looks up, and he gets what he's always wanted. The look in his eyes says everything. They are real. Those are his children. He immediately goes over to greet them, abandoning the spinning top. This is the last bit of symbolism, because he has now abandoned his guilt over Maul. He can now be with his real children again. He has finally come back to reality. But, then the big question becomes, if it was real and the top didn't matter, then why did the movie spend time focusing on it? Well, this could actually be for a number of reasons. One is that they left it open strictly for ambiguity reasons, to not lean towards one particular answer and make both arguments right. After all, this could all just be possible speculation, and we may never know the truth. But the biggest reason could be that the movie is essentially pulling an inception on the audience. Just like Cobb did with Maul, it's planting the idea in our minds to question Cobb's reality. And you know what? It worked. That's why people have had countless arguments and debates whether it was real or not, coming up with theory after theory. So in that regard, it did its job. However, what I choose to believe is that it was offering you a choice. Not just whether it was real or not, but whether the spinning top was still important or not. For me, I cared enough about Cobb's character to know that it was real, and after paying enough attention to the smaller details, I'm certain it was. And if you think it wasn't, I won't say you're wrong. And that's what I think any good movie should do. Create discussion and influence different perspectives instead of having everything be absolute. Granted, it is definitely easier to have it that way, and not everything has to be so complicated and heavy, but we definitely need to be challenged once in a while. And for me, if it'll make me enjoy something even more, I don't mind putting my brain to work. So those are my thoughts on the ending of Inception. Now, how did it initially make you feel when you first saw it, and what do you think of it now? Whatever it is, don't be shy, leave a reply. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the J-Man.